Welcome back to the show, John Ruffell, and I've ditched the virtual backgrounds and you just got me like I am today. And of course, it's Pentecost Sunday coming up in uh, well, today's Friday. So this is Pentecost weekend. Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And so let's think of it about what this means to the church as you celebrate pentecost is it just something where we celebrate quote the church's birthday or is it something that impacts your life and my life personally you know as we look through can get my bible here as we look through god's word the bible we find this amazing um, connection to the word um well i do anyway and i hope you do also um and so when we look at the book of acts and i off and on throughout this month we've been looking at the book of acts and as we look at the book of acts i want to ask again is it a book that is historical pseudo historical is it a book of instruction? Is it a writing that gives us a uh, pathway um, that we can follow today? Um, is it ancient history? Is it a myth? You know, these are important questions because depending on how we actually view the book of Acts in our life, it will determine to a very large extent, our belief system, not just in the Lord Jesus Christ, but also in the post Pentecost experience of the early church. And what I mean by that is so traditionally, um, especially the liturgical churches, major on the Gospels Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And quite right, it is because this is the record. Gospels are the record of Jesus' discourses here on earth, historical narrative, the culmination of the Old Testament promises to the Jewish people that their Messiah would come. And so it's right and proper that we give preeminence to the Gospels. But I know as I was growing up in a liturgical church, I really wasn't aware that after the Gospels, there was a whole slew of books of instruction, teaching and history that were for me today. So I was a little bit aware of the book of Acts, but I've got to confess the epistles really didn't impact my life until I made the decision to be, uh, or God gave me the choice, should I say, because it was his initiative. I was seeking truth, but truth came and sought me out. And I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ as a 20 year old. And that was the beginning of the manifestation of the call of God on my life. And I want to just to go back to this idea of what is the book of Acts? How do we perceive the book of Acts? I want to look at a book called Ladies of Gold, a book by uh, James Maloney, or edited by James Maloney, Maloney, who went home to be with the Lord only uh, less than a year ago. And if I can just find it here, my bookmark might be in the wrong place. What have I done here? Um, here we go. I think there's something here on page 198 of volume one, just for those of you that are familiar with the book. It's a book about the writings of um, a, a, a group of intercessors led primarily by Francis uh, Met Metcalf uh, through Second World War through to the 1970s and their prayer as an intercession was touching heaven and some of us regard that it was their prayers that were part of the initiative that launched the Jesus movement amongst the hippie people of san francisco back in 1967 
So what I want to say here is, Francis is talking about the Old Testament history of the Exodus, but this is also relevant to the New Testament and to the book of Acts. Um, although it took place nearly 4,000 years ago, or in our case, 2,000 years ago for the book of Acts, it impresses us in some mysterious way as being up to date, as though it had projected from the distant past into our own century. Francis Metcalf is talking about the word, the words of the Bible, the narrative of the Bible being somehow the, the distance of time is annulled and we are brought right into the present day working of the Holy Spirit in a way that impacts our life. Rather in the same way, when you read a novel or a story, you might, I've got some stories back there, I'm reading a biography right now. Um, you know, you, a good novel or good biography will draw you into the story so you feel you're there. It's the same way with the Bible, with one exception. A story can only ever be on the outside looking in, unless it's your own story. With the story of the Bible, God invites us to come into the experience and to actually live it out in our day-to-day -day life. Now, Pentecost, two days ahead. I've already got myself in hot water. I've got one bishop mad with me already because I suggested that actually the Roman Catholic Church is not complete in its teaching because in the Catechism it talks about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I maintain that that's incomplete unless you talk about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that St. Paul the Apostle talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So, um, but having said that, the gifts without grace and any gift without grace and any gift without fruit is, it can just lead to pride. And I think this is why the Catholic Church has downplayed the nine gifts of the power gifts of the Holy Spirit because they want to see believers who are grounded in an inner life of humility, surrender to God, sanctity. But I don't want us to stop there. That has to flourish and blossom into an openness to receiving the Holy Spirit. And so many of us, we stop at trying to be holy. Very often we don't even succeed in that. But a holy life is possible. But you don't have to have either or. You can have a holy life and have the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing through you as he wills, not as we will, but as he wills. You know, everything we have in life is really a gift from God. So, you know, fruit is a gift in as much as I can't manufacture fruit myself. I have to remain in the vine, as St. John says in his gospel. I have to abide in Christ and he abides in me. And that is what makes us fruitful in our lives. And so that the ability to be fruitful is a gift from God. But specifically, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are the Pentecostal gifts, I'm not talking about a denomination or a church, I'm talking about the experience of Pentecost, that the early church um, was told to wait in Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. Folks, if there's one thing the church desperately needs today, it's power from on high. We've got programs ad infinitum. But do we have the simplicity, the humility, the openness, the surrender to accept the power of God working through us without making excuses such as I hear this so often. Well, I'm not worthy. Well, I'm not ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Or maybe that gift is for someone else. I always hear an excuses. And my question for you today is, are you ready? to receive power from on high. Because if you are, it is here for you. 
And in closing, I want to read this uh, list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit as given to us by Paul the Apostle, St. Paul. Now, chapter 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. And I'm going to continue this on the next video. So make sure you stay tuned because I'm going to look at the spiritual gifts. This is John Ruffle. Don't go anywhere. God bless you.